Donut Bag is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Your data is your business. Protect it with ExpressVPN for three extra months free with a one-year package. Go to the link listed in my Twitter profile. What's going on, everybody? We are continuing our countdown of the greatest Seinfeld episodes, ranking every episode. I am now on part eight. We're going to recap numbers 55 through 40. And in this episode, we talk about toupees, bras, calzones, uh, face painters, so much more. This is we're getting into just just for the record, a bad Seinfeld episode is better than most any other uh, TV show. So uh, there are no <laughs> we're we're ranking them, but we're getting into the really good ones now. We're now we're into we're going to be in the top fifty. So let's get into it. Number 54, the Chinese woman from season six. Jerry gets a date with a woman, Donna Chang, who switches up phone lines and he thinks she's Chinese, but realizes that's not the case. Uh, Elaine and Jerry see George's father talking to a strange man in a cape. And uh, what else happened? Um, oh, Elaine's friend, Noreen, won't stop chatting. So she causes them to be broken up and Kramer gets involved and it's, it's, it's a whole thing, but, but the, the big thing about this episode was Donna Chang. Uh, the, the whole thing with them, them thinking she was Chinese. She quotes Confucius. She gets her L's and R's mixed up. Uh, at one point, uh, Jerry says, you know, you're not Chinese. Uh, and uh, somehow the, the lines were crossed with George and she ends up talking to George's mom, who George's mom and dad were talking about getting a divorce. But because she talked to uh, the nice Chinese woman she, it, uh, and, and that got advice for that, she decided to not get a divorce. But then when she found out that she was not <laughs> Chinese, uh, George's mom says, I'm not taking advice from some girl from Long Island. Uh, this is this is a very good episode. Uh, anytime George's parents are fighting, it's it's funny. Uh, the the man in the cape was was Frank's lawyer, and uh, and Frank says he's very independent. He doesn't follow the trends. And Estelle says, "Well, that looks ridiculous." And and he says, "He says you have no eye for fashion." It's just I have no eye for fashion. Classic George's parents fighting. Again, this is so much like my parents. Oh my goodness. It's it pains me to watch this episodes with the parents. Number 53, the caddy from season seven. Elaine's floozy former ex-roommate Sue Ellen Mishki is here, and Elaine buys her a bra, but because apparently she she's never worn one before. Uh so there's that whole thing with, with Sue Ellen Mishki and um, causing an accident because she only wears a bra and uh, Kramer gets Jackie Childs, the sewer, but then Jerry falls in love with her and it's the whole spoof on the OJ trial. So there's that, so there's that one story, but then there's the George story where George locks his keys in his car and leaves the car in the Yankees parking lot and his boss sees him come in the morning and see that he sees he's the first one uh, there in the morning. And then Steinbrenner leaves at night and sees that Steinbrenner, that George is the last one there. And they think that he's such a hard worker. Well, we know that's not the case, but uh, something happens where they go up to the cabin, the cabin that Kramer burned down, they, they rebuilt it. And uh, so George is in the cabin and, uh, Jerry and George, Jerry and Kramer take the car to get washed because it was full of uh bird poop and, and flyers, but then they get into the wreck because they see Sue Ellen Mishki in a bra. So they bring the car back and it's all damaged, and there's they see blood. And George's boss and Steinbrenner think that George died, so Steinbrenner goes to George's parents to tell them that George died. And it is one of the greatest scenes in the whole series. Um, 
first of all, well, first of all, let's get to Jackie Childs because anything involving Jackie Childs is hilarious. But they 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 tell Jackie Childs that Sue Ellen Mischke is the heir to the o- Henry Candy fortune. He says, oh, Henry, that's one of our top sellers, candy bars. He's got chocolate, peanuts, nougats. It's delicious, scrumptious, outstanding. Everything Jackie says is in threes. It's, it, it's awesome. Uh, but then... <laughs> And Steinbrenner shows up to the Costanza's house and Frank leaves a, a message on Jerry's machine. It says, Jerry's Frank Costanza. Mr. Steinbrenner is here. George is dead. Call me back. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so George, Jerry's telling George what's what's going on. And, and George, uh, uh, he says, Jerry says, aren't you going to tell your parents you're still alive? And he's like, oh, they could use the break. Uh, but one of the greatest scenes is when Steinbrenner goes to the Costanzas. Uh, Steinbrenner says, well, he's been logging up, logging pretty heavy hours. First one in, last one out. That kid was a human dynamo. And George's mom says, are you sure that's what we're talking about, George? And then as George Steinbrenner is telling his parents that their son died, Frank Costanza is yelling at him about a Jay Buter trade. <laughs> that, is, that is so, that is so awesome. He's like, what the hell did you trade Jay Buter for? He had 30 home runs over hundred RBIs last year. You got a rocket for an arm. You don't know what you're doing. And, and Cypress says, well, Buter was a good prospect. No question about it. But my baseball people said, Ken Phelps, Matt. They kept saying, Ken Phelps, Ken Phelps. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If your son just died, maybe don't yell at the, the guy about a baseball trade. Um, if you're younger and don't know what the hate is about George Steinbrenner back then, it was George Steinbrenner. He was one of those owners that just he, he kept he kept messing up because he would trade like young prospects for veterans. It was all about now. And in the 80s, it did not work. Obviously, in the 90s, and they 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 started winning. But uh but yeah, it, it was George Steinbrenner was a very hated owner because he was he was very he was very involved in the franchise too much. Number fifty two, the Rye from season seven. George is nervous about a coming upcoming dinner he and parents are having with Susan and her parents. They don't hit it off, and then there's the Rye. Um, Elaine has a musician boyfriend, but Jerry. Uh, may ruin the relationship when he describes it as hot and heavy and Kramer gets the use of a neighbor's handsome cab and begins giving guided tours of New York. So this is the, this is the episode where George's parents meet Susan's parents and it's, it's, it's just such a clash. It's, it's just a, it's, they're, they're both absurd in their own ways. (laughs) Uh, But, but George's dad says, let me understand. You got the hen, the chicken, and the rooster. The rooster goes with the chicken. So who's having sex with the hen? And Susan's dad said, they're all chickens. The rooster has sex with all of them. And, Frank, and George's dad says, that's perverse. Uh, also, he, he, he brings up the idea of spoilers, which, I mean, we still deal with to this day and have dealt with for years where they're discussing a movie and they're talking about a scene and, and Frank says, I haven't seen it. Don't, don't talk about it. It's like, it has nothing to do with the plot. He's like, I like to go in fresh. Uh, but this is also, so, so Jer- George's parents bring a, a, a rye bread. They don't put it out. So Frank takes it back and George tries to bring it back, but there was none left at uh, Schnitzel's bakery or whatever. So Jerry, J- the old lady in front of Jerry, takes the last rye bread and Jerry steals it from her. <laughs> she, he says, shut up, you old bag. And of course that comes back to haunt him later uh, when um, with the Cadillac episode, because she's the deciding vote and whether <laughs> Morty gets uh, impeached from, from the, from the Del Boca Vista. Um, also Kramer, Kramer got a whole bunch of stuff from, like a Sam's Club Costco type thing, and he got too much stuff, and he he loves his beefarino, and he was feeding it to Rusty the horse, and uh, he had George had Kramer take Susan's parents on a romantic horse ride, and 
Uh, it didn't go well because the horse was farting all the time because he was eating the beefarino. And uh, yeah, the Kramer would say, Rusty, Rusty. The, the farts were too bad. Um, I just wonder, did did Susan's parents know that the guy driving the thing Kramer was the one that burned down their cabin? Probably not, but that would have been great. Um, also, the whole thing with, with Elaine's boyfriend and he didn't do uh, a certain <laughs> thing and then he did and it ruined him from playing saxophone or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. That's a little, little too risque. Number 51, the Calzone. Uh, Steinbrenner takes a liking to George's calzone and the two of them start having lunch every day but then George um, angers the, the calzone people because he looks like he's taking a tip so he has to use Newman to uh, deliver the calzones and um, also Kramer likes his clothes warm so he puts them in, a, in, a, in an oven I don't know. And then and, and then there's a thing with uh with well 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 Elaine's Elaine's guy Todd Gack uh keeps making stupid bets so that so that he'll go out with her and he keeps saying that these aren't dates, but then eventually she he has them meet her parents and I don't know that was that was really stupid. But uh also Jerry's girlfriend is really pretty, so she gets whatever she wants. Hey. Real talk. We know how this is the world works. If you're pretty, you get you get whatever you want. So this is just this is just playing up on that. Uh, they, they say she's like a beautiful Godzilla. Uh, but uh, but I I anytime anytime there's Steinbrenner in, in an episode, it's good. Uh, at one point it says Big Stein was an A plus calzone. Uh, but because George annoys the calzone uh, people. He gets Newman to do it because it's on his route or whatever. And, but, but Newman doesn't work. He calls off one day because it rained. And, and George is like, You don't work in the rain. You're a mailman. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow. It's the first one. But of course, Newman is Newman. Um, and then Kramer tries to do it, but then Kramer fights with the, with the Calzone guy who's like a, you know, Italian typical italian pizza pizza owner and you know it's it's kramer kramer <laughs> pretending to be italian or something like that it was, it was it was pretty amusing number 50 the face painter from season six george gets uh, jerry gets tickets to a new jersey devils playoff game he invites kramer putty and elaine but then they're weirded out because putty shows up in face paint uh, they try to get tickets again, but Jerry never says thank you, so they don't get the tickets. And and then there's the whole thing with George telling his girlfriend that he loves her, but she, but she can't hear him because she's not hard. She's hard of hearing in one ear. And, and Kramer battles a chimpanzee at the zoo. That, that was that was really dumb. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, George George falls in love with a girl named Sienna, and Jerry says, "Yeah, he's dating a crayon." Um, also, Gary Fogel, the the guy played by John John Lovitz, the guy that pretended to have cancer, he died in a car accident from adjusting his toupee. Okay, whatever. Um, but but the whole thing, the main thing is the, the face painting. But he's saying, "Gotta support the team." Um, and and him going up after the game, going up to a car that had a priest in it, and and <laughs> Putty said, "We're the devils! We're the devils!" <laughs> and and the priest thinking that is the devil. Devil is like El Diablo, El Diablo, and uh, yeah, that that was funny. Um, yeah, anything. All Putty Putty is another one of those characters. Anytime he was in it, it was funny. He, uh, he, he, uh, Elaine told him, I don't like you wearing face paint. He's like, Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll change for you. I'll, I'll, I won't do it anymore. And uh, then he says, I gotta go home and get changed before the game. I'll be back. We'll make out. Just, just the way he says things is just so funny. Number 49, the red dot from season three. As a thank you for getting him a job at her place of work, George gets Elaine a thank you gift. 
he gets her a cashmere sweater that's marked down from six hundred dollars to eighty five dollars. But the only problem is there's a red dot on it that everyone can see, and it annoys Elaine. Um, meanwhile, George has a tryst with the cleaning lady, and uh, Elaine's boyfriend falls off the wagon because he mixes drinks with Jerry's drink, and. Kramer drinks scotch. <laughs> I think that's all, all Kramer did in this uh, episode. Um, Kramer, um, Jerry had an old bottle of Hennigan's and they tried to see if if you could drink, if you could smell them after you, you drank the Hennigan's. So, so Kramer starts drinking the Hennigan's and then he starts doing like commercials for Hennigan's. He's just like, he's like, that's right, folks. I just had three shots of Hennigan's and I don't smell. Imagine you could walk around all drunk all day. That's Hennigan's. No smell, no tell. Scotch. Good stuff. Uh, and they talk about whether it's on the wagon or off the wagon or, you know, I'm not, I'm not even sure myself. But the main thing about this episode, one of the most iconic scenes, one of the best scenes in all the series is when George gets caught with the cleaning lady and the boss says, I'm going to get right to the point. It has come to my attention that you and the cleaning woman have engaged in sexual intercourse on the desk in your office. Is that correct? And George says, was that wrong? Should I not have done that? I tell you, I got to play ignorance on this thing because if anyone had said anything to me when I first started here, that, that sort of thing was frowned upon, you know, because I work in a lot of offices and I tell you, people do that all the time. One of the best scenes in the entire thing. Um, there, there is a line. I don't know. I don't even know why they say this. They say, hey, Jerry, when do you consider that sex has taken place? And Jerry says, I would say when the nipple makes its first appearance. Uh, the... The they had to do, I think they had to do the the feel good ending where uh Elaine's boyfriend is not um is is back on the wagon or whatever he's not drinking anymore. Uh we had to I think they had to do that because that's a real bad look. When, I mean I know Seinfeld has done some awful things, but making a guy an alcoholic is not not a uh, good thing. So Number 48, the beard from season six. Elaine attempts to convert a homosexual man to heterosexuality. Kramer sets George up with a woman and not having an honor photograph, describes her to a police sketch artist. Jerry um, gets together with a female officer and takes a polygraph test on whether or not he has seen the show Melrose Place. This is the show with, this is the episode with George in a toupee. And he is he is full of confidence. He's feeling good. And Elaine hates that he is wearing this stupid toupee. And uh, yeah, George is in, in the toupee in the toupee. This is another one of those iconic scenes where eventually Elaine just gets so sick of it, rips it off his head, takes it to the window, and says, I don't like this thing. And here's what I'm doing with it. And she throws it out the window. Um, yeah, because because what happens is he, he, he Kramer tries to fix um, him up with, with this girl. And it turns out she's bald. Um, and, and George says, she's bald. You fixed me up with a bald woman. And Elaine just freaks out. And says, don't, don't you see what's going on here? You're bald. And, and George says, I was bald. Um, so there was, there was that whole thing. There was uh, when, when Elaine was trying to convert the guy, uh, he said, you know, she's, she's, she's trying to get him. And, and, she, and he says, you know, why don't you switch teams? And, and he says, but I'm a starting, starting shortstop. And, and Elaine says, we need a shortstop real bad. But it doesn't work because this is, uh, is another good uh, quote. Elaine says, well, here's the thing. Being a woman, I only really have access to the uh, equipment, what, 30, 45 minutes a week? And that's on a good week? How can I be expected to have the same exp expertise as people who own the equipment and have access to it 24 hours a day their entire lives? You can't. And, and Jerry says, that's why they lose very few players. Very funny, very funny. Uh, the whole and then Kramer does work in police lineups, and that was that was kind of dumb. But um, 
the, the, the whole thing with Jerry and the lie detector thing, um, he, he, he agrees a lie detector and he knows he's going to get caught, but he tries to ask George for advice because George is the all time greatest liar. And, and George says, I, I can't do it. I can't impart my wisdom to you. She said, just remember one thing. Just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Hmm. Uh, but in the end, Jerry takes a lie detector and they're asking him all these questions about Melrose Place. And he freaks out. He says, oh, yeah. And he just starts, he, he admits that he sees the show. Um, and at the end, they're all watching uh, Mel- Melrose Place. And, and Jerry says, oh, that Michael, I hate him. He's just so smug. Number 47, the trip from season four. Jerry is set to appear on the Tonight Show in Los Angeles and asks George if he'd like to come along. And they like they take this opportunity to find Kramer. Kramer has been going on auditions, but also is um, wanted for being the smog strangler or whatever. Uh, I, I don't know why I had this episode even this high. This episode stunk. It's just it was out of place. It was very out of place for them to go to LA. It was just very weird. Um, J- J- um, George at the, in, at the backstage sees uh, Corbin Burnson and George went and talks to them, and then they go on the, when they go on the Tonight Show. They talk about their horrible experiences with George. George tells Corbin Burnson that he basically killed this his girlfriend's cat, and and he says that should be a case on law on LA law, and then. He tells George Went enough with the bar already. Uh, maybe maybe have Cheers be somewhere else or some stupid thing like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, this was bad. It also was it was off because there was no uh, there was no Elaine because uh, Julie, Julia Louis Dreyfus was on maternity leave. Um, at one point, Kramer approaches Fred Savage and and basically says, "Hey, I'm not I'm not crazy." Uh, he was just trying to give him his his, his script or whatever. Um, just, just not, just not a good episode. I don't even know why it was this high. Um, also the, the, the thing with the, uh, with the, with the beds, he's like, that's one tuck and one no tuck. Okay. Whatever. I, in the end, in the end, they all come back to New York. Even Kramer comes back to New York and doesn't even mention it. So whatever. Number 46, the label maker from season six, Jerry gets Super Bowl tickets. Can't use them because of going to the Drake's wedding. He gives him the Tim Watley and gets a label maker in return. And he, uh, Watley is accused of re-gifting. Also, George learns that his girlfriend has a male roommate and gets weirded out by the concept, but loves the male roommate's possessions, which include a velvet couch. And Kramer and Newman engage in a heated game of risk. Oh boy. This was okay. I mean, the whole thing with, with um, the Super Bowl tickets, um, and the re-gifting and, and the, the, all the all the plots uh, were so intertwined. That was that was very interesting. But uh, this is, I think, once again where we hear George say, "I would wrap myself in velvet if it was socially acceptable." Uh, but uh, <laughs> at one point, Jerry says, "Oh, it's risk, a game of wor- of world domination played by two guys that could barely run their own lives." Uh, and basically, they have to keep the game of risk at Jerry's apartment because they're afraid that Newman and Kramer are, um, they're suspicious that each other is going to cheat, whatever. Uh, I, I like when, when, when Newman goes into Jerry's, uh, goes to Jerry's apartment and he tries to get in. And uh, <laughs> Newman says, Jerry, I'm a little insulted. And Jerry says, you're not a little anything, Newman. Uh, at, at one point about uh, about Elaine and in Watley, uh, Jerry says, "I think he, I think he regifted. He did, he did gifted. Now he's using an upstairs invite as a springboard to a Super Bowl sex romp." And the the whole thing ends up with Jerry and Newman going to the Super Bowl. Okay, whatever. Um, unfortunately, this is another one of those timely unfortunate timely uh episodes because while they're playing risk on the subway um kramer is winning and uh i think all all uh newman says well at least i still have ukraine 
and Kramer says, Ukraine is weak. And then the, the some guy, I'm guessing from Ukraine, comes and hears us. Ukraine is not weak. And he, and he breaks the board and, and smashes the game. Okay. Whatever. Un- unfortunately, timely. Number 45, the glasses from season five. George loses his glasses at the health club, uh, but his plan to get a new pair using Kramer's discount backfires. Jerry buys a black market air conditioner. And Elaine gets bit by a dog at the optometrist's office. Uh, what does Kramer do? Kramer doesn't do much in this episode. Um, this is uh, so. Yeah, they're all they're getting glasses, and a, a dog bites Elaine, and Elaine starts acting like she has rabies. Uh, she goes to a doctor, and it, I guess it's an Indian doctor or something like that, and and, and she says, "Do I get a shot?" And and the doctor says, no shot, dog bite, woof, woof, not bang, bang. Okay. Um, I, Jerry's girlfriend is Anna Gunn, who was very big on Breaking Bad. Okay. Um, I guess what, what Kramer does in this episode is he confronts the optometrist because he got him off sugar. And, and he has a scene. He says, you were all hopped up on cinnamon swirls. They wouldn't even serve you anymore. You wouldn't even have any teeth if it wasn't for me dragging you to Joe's fruit stand and stuffing cantaloupe down your throat. Great scene. Um, George accused um, the girl, Jerry's girlfriend of, of making out with cousin Jeffrey, who apparently looks like a horse, but George didn't have his glasses. So they wasn't sure what was going on. At one point, George thought he was eating an apple, but it was actually an onion. Uh, okay. Um, uh, the, the, the yeah the, the Kramer gets the air conditioner just sets it on the window sills and he says ah it's installed like really and then the the air conditioner ends up falling and lands on a dog okay um at the end uh Jerry goes to cousin Jeffrey's apartment but Uncle Leo is there and Uncle Leo says you know his botany teacher from college stays in close touch with him they became friends that's pretty rare I mean actual friends like equals they have dinner together they have discussions I love Uncle Leo I gotta do a I gotta do a um, a ranking of all the the Seinfeld characters number 44 the old man from season four Elaine gets the gang to volunteer visiting the elderly each adopting an old person and it just does not go well elaine gets uh, freaked out by her um her elderly person because she's she has a huge goiter but she did have an affair with with gandhi um george's guy fires him and jerry (laughs) loses his guy Uh, also kramer and newman scheme to sell records to vintage music store and they they steal the records from jerry's old guy um it was there's some good parts but there's some eh, i don't know i don't know this the old guy was a little they were all they were all they were all a little cranky but uh in the beginning um george says there's got to be more to life than this what gives you pleasure and jerry says listening to you i listen to this for 15 minutes and i'm on top of the world your misery is my pleasure uh i'm not sure if we're introduced to newman but I think this is the first time we really see him. Well, we, this is the first time we 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 hear what his profession is, that he's a mailman. And George says, Isn't aren't those the guys that go crazy and 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 shoot and shoot up the place? And they said, Why is that? And Newman says, Because the mail never stops, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. There's never a let up, it's relentless. Every day it piles on more and more and more. And you gotta get it out, but the more you get it out, it keeps coming. And then the barcode reader, reader breaks, and it's probably clear clear now say and you know Newman. Newman has one of his freakouts. Um, Newman and and Kramer trying to sell the records to the du- Bleaker Bob, who who was the uh, the villain in Saw. Um, that that was that was pretty good. Basically, they they give the records to him, and and the the guy will give like won't give him any money for them. And, and they said, but we have Sergio Mendez. Sergio Mendez has a cult following. They follow him like a cult. He can't even walk down the street in South America. Guys, like, well, that's not my problem. Um, also, also George says, hey, I'm a great quitter. It's one of the few things I do well. I come from a long line of quitters. My father was a quitter. My grandfather was a quitter. I was raised to give up. Uh, so. 
they are they're in Jerry's old guy's apartment. They're taking the records, and the, the old guy doesn't like it. He fights the old, he fights Kramer and Newman. Then in the fight, the the dentures go flying. They end up in the garbage disposal, and the, and they turn on the disposal and mess them up. They lose the old guy, and somehow George is with his shirt off, um, having the um, cleaning lady who does not speak English dip his head in oil okay cool <laughs> typical typical seinfeld craziness number 43 the conversion from season five george decides to convert to latvian orthodox to impress a girl against his angry angry parents objections kramer converts a nun at the church and jerry takes a peek at his girlfriend's medicine cabinet and is stunned by what he finds okay i mean this is this is another one of those great Seinfeld plots where George converts to Latvian Orthodox. What's funny is the writer for this episode didn't know that Latvian Orthodox was actually a thing. And, and uh, he just, you know, he just kind of lucked into it. I think he just like thought to made, made, make up a religion, but he, but there actually is one. Um, when they, when George converts or he, he's trying to convert the, the father asks him, is there one aspect of the faith that you find particularly attractive? And George says, I think the hats. The hat conveys that solemn religious look that you look in a faith. Very pious. That's that's funny. Um, Elaine's boyfriend is, they, they argue with, because he's a podiatrist, whether he's really a doctor or not, who cares? Uh, I think the, the main thing from this episode is, is, the, is the phrase kavorka. Kramer got the Kavorka, the Lord of the Animal. Uh, but then he he takes a bunch of garlic and stuff to, to get the, I don't know, to, to make himself smelly or something like that. Um, also, a great scene is when George's parents find out that he is converting religion and George's parents are freaking out. And George's dad says, wait, is this a group that goes around mutilating squirrels? That's any anything involving George's parents is awesome. Number 42, the shoes from season four. Jerry is astounded when Kramer tells him he's managed to kiss a girl Jerry dated several times, only find out they ever got a handshake. The woman is fascinated with Elaine's expensive shoes, which drives Elaine crazy. Um, and meanwhile, Jerry and George are trying to finalize a script and they have a meeting with Russell from NBC. But Russell catches George staring at a 15-year-old daughter's cleavage. And now it's up to Elaine to come to the rescue. Um, this is during the whole show within a show thing. And they're mirroring what happened. Because in, in, in the actual Seinfeld first episode, there was no Elaine. And I think I think the network tell, told them, like, you better have a, a female character in there. Um, so they're they're kind of uh, kind of making fun of that. Um, also. Um, Jerry and George uh, finish the script and they give it to people to look at and George gives it to his therapist and she says she didn't like it and and they, they argue about it and, and she says George if you're going to be in a creative field you're going to have to learn how to deal with criticism and George says how's this for criticism um you stink how do you like that criticism you know what's funny to me that diploma on the wall. That's my idea of comedy. You sitting here telling me people what to do. That's funny. Okay. Uh, the whole thing about about Jerry and um, she was a chef, uh, and 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 Kramer snubbed her, and that that attracted her to him. Uh, so there was there was that whole thing. Um, George says, I saw I snubbed for a year, nothing. Every woman I saw, I snubbed. You never saw people so pleased. Um, but when George goes to George and Jerry go to Russell Dalrymple's apartment, um, he is he is sick, he's throwing up. He's throwing up because Elaine sneezed on his pasta primavera at uh forget forget what that what that um, restaurant was called. Um, but but so now he's sick, he's throwing up, and the daughter comes in. And she bends over and 
Jerry like nudges George, like, Hey, look, look at the cleavage and George is staring at it. And Russell says, get a good look Costanza. That's another iconic scene. And then also at afterwards, when Jerry says, look at the cleavage is like looking at the sun. You don't stare at it. It's too risky. You get a sense of it. Then you look away. Very true, by the way. Number 41, the pledge drive from season six. Jerry hosts the annual PBS pledge drive and asks George to get some Yankee players to appear on the show. George comes through and gets Danny Tartable to appear on the show. Uh, Kramer discovers that Jerry's been, get, been getting birthday cards from Nana, but he cashes them and Na- Nana's bank account is overdrawn and then Nana goes missing. Um, and Jerry, Jerry starts a rumor that Elaine's friend uh, was hitting on Jerry and that, that, that was stupid. Um, and George thinks everyone is giving him the finger and decides to follow someone while driving Danny Tartable to the pledge drive. And oh, oh, but the, the, the main thing from this is Mr. Pitt, Elaine discovers that Mr. Pitt eats his candy bars with a knife and fork. And that starts a trend where everybody is, is, is eating with a, with a knife and fork. Um, when George is pitching the idea to get a Yankee to show up uh, at the PBS pledge drive, um, he is eating, he is eating his candy bar with a knife and fork. And they're like, what are you doing? And he says, I am eating my dessert. How do you eat it with your hands? And it just starts a trend where everyone does it at the end of the episode. They look at the around of the restaurant and everyone is doing it. And Elaine gets up and says, what is wrong with you people? Have you all gone mad? So there's that. Um, but yeah, the thing with Nana and um, uh, she's she's missing because she goes to to look for the bank, and then they find her, and then uh, and then she calls in to talk to Jerry to the pledge drive, and Kramer gets her to to donate fifteen hundred dollars, and Uncle Leo is there for some reason, and she's like, no, no, stop it! She's on a very fixed income. Number 40, the nap from season eight. George needs to find a way to have a nap at work. His glass wall doesn't seem to make it that possible until he finds a way. Anyway, he runs into a bit of trouble when Mr. Steinbrenner wants him to, to see him and decides to wait in George's office. Uh, Elaine has a problem with her new boyfriend, Hal, who has a new mattress delivered to his house. And Kramer swims in the, uh, in the, in the river. And Jerry is losing patience with the man he's hired to install new kitchen cabinets. Uh, Con, Conrad, Connie. Um, he's, he is, he's not the most annoying character, but he's pretty annoying. He's, he's the one that that's like, I don't know what, I don't know what screw to use. I don't know what hinge to use. What should I do? It's like, dude, make a decision. And then finally Jerry gets fed up and just says, dude, just do whatever. And he, he has this gigantic, um, kitchen cabinet thing that just like takes up the whole kitchen and it looks horrible so he makes him put it back um, yeah that was that was dumb also also he he builds George's uh, little nap thing under the desk which is cool but uh, <laughs> Steinbrenner comes in and he doesn't know he doesn't know the uh, the song is like it's all hot breaker Love taker, brew baker, run this present like a man. Oh, oh. And, and he doesn't know the song. He's trying to get someone to tell what the song is. It's Pat Benatar, by the way. And uh, so basically he's he's waiting in George's office for George. And then the grandkids come in. <laughs> the grand, he doesn't know the name of his own grandkids. He calls one of them shorty. He just calls one of them girl. <laughs> um, but they they the kids see him. The dog sees George under the desk, but Slimebrenner doesn't. And George panics and calls Jerry and says, "Call in a bomb threat." And Jerry pretends to be a, ther- a, a terrorist and says, uh, "Well, you have to meet my demands of everybody getting their own fitted hat <laughs> at, at, at a Yankee game," and that that drives George crazy. Um, and then there's a at one point they, they think there's a bomb the terrorists put a bomb there so they they uh they they tear apart George's desk and in one one uh, drawer there's there's a Playboy magazine and and candy okay 
Uh, <laughs> okay, so that is this uh, this episode numbers fifty five through forty. Next, we will do numbers forty through twenty five. Getting to the good ones, almost there. Getting to the, I mean, there's there's already been a lot of good ones. There's a lot of been a lot of iconic scenes and characters, but now we're getting into the the very best, the top forty. So, thanks for watching or listening, and I will see you later. <laughs>